Hello, beer tubers, and Merry Christmas. Peter, the master of hoppets, here. Today is the 24th of December. It's Christmas today, guys. Uh, yeah, it's been a ride so far with this bad boy. The beery Christmas from Severa Bia and Hops. From now on, we're going to go into the review. After the, that, we'll go into a bit of a discussion. And if you only want to see the review, just watch the first part. And then you can leave after the discussion. And if you want to see the entire thing, you're welcome to watch. Because I think it'll be a bit long. But let's check out and see what they hid in the beery Christmas box here for the 24th of December. I really hope that this will be good. I'm going to keep it a bit sideways so I don't get spoiled from it. <laughs> um, let's see. So this says this is going to be good with plat. Wow, served really hot actually almost. 12 to 14 degrees. Something... Duck? <laughs> makes, makes sense though. I mean, on the 24th we had duck. Very common in Denmark. Uh, but let's see here, the 24th of December. What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> okay. That's a pretty good breeder to finish with. Uh, this is none other than Founders Backwoods Bastard. So there was actually a barrel aged beer in here. That's cool. So uh, Founders Backwoods Bastard. It says Barrel Age Series, and that's about it. Does it say anything here? Uh, ingredients, water, barley, hops, yeast. Uh, I'd like to find a vintage stamp somewhere. So, uh, Beckwith Bastards is their Scotch Ale. Uh, they have Dirty Bastard. It's pretty much that beer, I think, made even stronger. And then they aged it in uh, bourbon barrels, or uh, yeah, uh, bourbon barrels. And um, I put it in bottles. It's one of the beers I reviewed back in the day that blew my mind like crazy. Uh, so really fun to see this in here, actually. I had, I, I had it earlier this year, an older vintage uh, that I drank as a walking beer going to a concert with a metal band. <laughs> Which was stupid because it made me smashed. But uh, this uh, vintage here, I guess, is from maybe this year? I imagine, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it, it looks like it's newer. So I, I'm taking it as this year's vintage. It is on. Now, where is the ABV on here? Is it hidden on the side? I just spent like a very long time looking for it. It's got a stamp that's kind of smeared, but it says 11.1% ABV. So, uh, hey, let's get backwards bastard, popped, and poured. Okay guys, so we're back with the Founders Backwoods Bastards, I guess 2017, poured in the glass. Uh, after a little bit of spillage problems, Peter tried to take a fancy looking picture for the thumbnail, and then it foamed everywhere. <laughs> Great job, Pete. Uh, or Master of Hoppets. So, uh, we got it poured, guys. It's, it looks like what I remember. Super dark, dark, dark copper, or the darkest of ruby reds. It looks like, like probably black-ish, or really dark dark brown on camera but it's just like this super deep ruby red it's actually a really freaking beautiful beer in the glass i mean it looks amazing it looks very nice it's very nice like the clarity is also making it look even nicer but just because like the light shines through and you get a deep ruby red the head that was there which was nice and fluffy looking <laughs> when i tried to make that thumbnail uh is you you know kind of beige slightly tan looking in the glass Let's check out the aroma on Backwoods Bastard 2017. Ah, oh, that smells really nice. You know, this, I guess you'd call it an Imperial Scotch Ale, if you could say that, uh, because it's so strong. But it's just abundance of figs and raisins and, and dark fruits and dry dark fruits. They say this will be good with orange duck. I can see that because there's almost like a dry orange. It's just something can odd. Did I say orange? No, apricot something duck. Okay, well, I was thinking orange because it's there's like a slight orange tinge to it for some reason, like dried oranges, orange peel. Super raisiny, figgy, crazy, and then it's just like sweet bourbon. <laughs> really sweet, fudgy bourbon character. Oh, okay, Woody Tones. Actually, funny enough, when I had this, so I, I told you guys earlier, I had this earlier this year, a previous vintage. Actually, we got it for free from a local bottle shop because it was past the bef before date, even though it was still tasting amazing. But it was actually a bit too much drinking it 
just like lukewarm. <laughs> we didn't cool it or anything before going to the show. They just gave us something. Like, you want this for free, guys? We can't sell it anymore. Okay, cool. I think it was like a 2015 vintage or something, maybe. But let's try the fresh one. Cheers, guys. Now that's the beer that puts you in the Christmas spirit. The last two ones were winners. Yes. Ah, oh, that is really nice. That is really nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> big, big bourbon, dry, oaky flavors, a charry, woody flavors, loads of dark fruits. Even like a hint of stewed currants or like the, like a mix of stewed dark fruits and red fruits. Something like that. Or berries stewed together and then caramelized. Because it's got like big caramel profiles too. Like caramel, toffee, sweet, sticky, kind of almost like Christmas cake. Uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, the fruit cake. Almost like fruit cakey flavors without being too much because I know everyone hates fruit cake. But in this, it's pretty good. Mmm. It's really nice. The reason why, by the way, I also think it's a 2017 vintage because it says it has a best before date for 2018. And I think most new founders bottles only have a year shelf life. Even these, they like have super short shelf lives, which is kind of crazy. And also because I, I haven't seen any newer releases from founders except recently with the barrel age stamp on it. So I think it might be the, the new one, but this is great. This is a great beer by Founders. This is actually one of my favorite Founders beers, uh, Beckwith Bastard, along with KBS. Um, I haven't had KBS in a while, but it got a lot of critique in recent years, but I still think it's a very nice barrel aged beer, but I think it's a lot of times a question of your palate changing and other breweries being inspired by a beer like that and making even better stuff. It's something that happens with time, you know, <laughs> but, um, no, this is awesome. Just big, big punchy. It's almost like you take the brewery style old ale stuff, but dial it down a bit on the booze so it's more drinkable. Because this is insanely drinkable for 11% beer. And then just give it that, like the same kind of um, fruit flavors, maybe less barrel flavor, but those big raisin figs, uh, stewed dark fruits with uh, like, Red berries, as I said. It's got some caramel, it's got some toffee notes, uh, sticky toffee pudding type flavor almost, and that charry, woody, oaky finish. A full, sticky, chewy mouthfeel. Leaves a sticky gloss on your lips. Gloss? <laughs> gloss on your lips. And then, like, nice, medium, chewy, creamy. Or maybe not creamy, but sticky, sticky on the mouthfeel. This is, uh, yeah, actually, it's really nice. It's pretty much how I remember it. I, again, I haven't had it in a, like, well, I had it earlier this year, as I told you guys before going to a middle show, but I was kind of drunk already when I had it, so. But it's, uh, the recent memory I have from it is it's very similar to this. It's a great beer. Uh, Rating-wise, I'm gonna go 90, 97, I'd say. It's one of the best barrel-aged scotch ales you can get, and that's easy to get. They had to give us the bottles of the whatever vintage that was old, but this is easy to come by now in Denmark. Most founders beers make it to Denmark nowadays, at least the kind of household names like this one. And one that is coming next year, which I can't wait to review, is CBS, one of the first whales I tried to hunt but never caught uh, in trading, but that's coming. And I heard a lot of critique from it, but we'll see how it is once it comes. I think I will wait with reviewing it until Jakob the Lord of Malts is back. As you might have seen in previous videos, he was here for a short amount of time. So we should some shot some reviews, but he's going to be back in January. And I think it's actually in January it's coming. So as soon as I see that, I want to get it. I have to try that beer. But yeah, 97 guys, Founders Backwoods Bastard, the number one beer of Savoia Beer's Beery Christmas. What a good beer to keep for the 24th. I was a bit scared uh, with the rest of the beers. Okay guys, let's try that again. My camera shut off or stopped recording because my SD card was full. So, uh, review of Banquet's Bastard done. Rambling start about the beer Christmas calendar. So first of all, this was really fun to do actually. It was, it was a fun thing to do all this stuff, you know? 
uh, going in blind, having no idea what was in this box, and then doing the whole memory lane, you know, there was a lot of going down memory lane stuff in this box. And, you know, the artwork that Carl did, it probably looks like shit because I don't have autofocus on, I'm focusing on somewhere, but you can, I guess you get it. <laughs> the whole galaxy theme there, it looks great. Quite fitting for it being a Star Wars Christmas as well. <laughs> well uh, but it, that was fun. Uh, it was very interesting, the whole idea with uh, having so many different countries in the box as well. Some were represented in collaborations, some were beers from specific countries. Uh, and the whole big plethora of beer styles in here. There was so many different beer styles, which was pretty fun as well. Um, yeah, so cool, cool stuff. A cool idea with the whole NFC chip. And all this stuff, you know, to, to see what's like in the box or what info is about the beer. Again, I didn't use it because I wanted to do this blind. And also, I really like this. The whole idea with food pairings. I just think that they maybe next year should do the English versions with English language. Or just only do it in English, really. I mean, most people in France would speak English by now, I guess. But uh, also this, imply like having flyers with some discounts and all this stuff. All that is pretty cool. But... My big beef with this box is that just the quality has been like this, like like all over the place. Like we've got grades from 97 down to 50. I mean, that is crazy. That is crazy. Um, when I started my channel in 2009, I reviewed a Christmas calendar to start with. And when I think back at that, the quality was also a bit wobbly, but that one at least had a bit more great beer but again from a financial standpoint that was also more expensive uh, I actually don't know the exact retail price for the beer Christmas calendar but uh, I think I paid 800 kroners back then which I do not know what is in euros it's like almost 100 euros or something like that or oh, it's more than 100 euros actually so that's a different territory I think this is not nearly as expensive so in a monetary sense you can't put all only like great beers like this in, in, in the brush from yesterday um, because they're much more expensive beers but I I'd almost prefer that uh, so maybe I don't know how they do this next year and in the years in the future you know put in a bit more high quality stuff and maybe just hit the price be a bit higher but that was one of the, the things with me like the, the level of quality was often a bit too low so even if it was fun trying it blind, then you just get a beer that's just utter disappointment. At least if you're a beer geek like me. But then I can also see it from a different standpoint than like, okay, if you come into this as a, a newer beer geek, you're new into beer, and or this is more of an introductory level, or you're in an introductory level, then it's a bit more fun maybe because you haven't tried as much. But yeah, for me and my beer geek travels, I wanted more stuff like this, maybe even, you know, not all barrel aged stuff, but just that kind of level of quality as, as with Backwoods Bastard. So that was one of my big beefs with the box. It's like, like the, the quality was a bit subpar. And then I also, a lot, a lot of the time, I, I, they make a big deal about, a, about the labels being uh, severe beer made or especially brewed for severe beer. Who cares about that? Have a couple in it that's made especially for the box. That's fun. But it's, especially when you don't go all the way with the box, because a lot of the beers were just labeled especially for severe beer then i mean I, I really when i go out and buy a christmas calendar i don't care who if it's made especially for you or whatever it is sometimes i can even you know when you see something oh made especially for this and this then that can even be a warning sign but when i go pick something like this up myself i would just say i don't really care about that i just want good beer in it so but don't focus too much on that. It's cool. It's cool with the labels and all that. I know having your company on it, but a lot of the beers were not specially made for the box. They were specially labeled. I just want to state that because it says that in the press material that it's specially brewed for the box. But, um, or maybe they justify it by saying this batch is especially brewed. I'm not out to get some beer or hopped or anything. I'm just keeping my general thoughts on the box. And, yeah, so the quality, that whole thing with labeling, yeah, uh, that was one of my beefs with it. Then another thing is the, the big problem with me is like the age of some of the beers. Like if you make a box like this and you have as many hoppy beers as this had, they all should be fresher. So many of the hoppy beers were freaking old. And I think that's just a pretty big disappointment. 
I don't know how early, I think they start quite early on, you know, planning a box like this. So some of the beers that are actually specially made for the box or whatever are gathering and it, it takes a while. So I think that has something to do as well with the freshness of the beers, but like, I'd say almost like schedule everything else and then get the hoppy beers last minute. And then just get them from someone who's producing great hoppy beer at that time, instead of, uh, if you can, I don't know how you're, cause I know they're also, they have Interdrinks, which is an import company, but I don't know how they do it. It's, it's just, it's, it would be nicer if the IPAs were fresher. And then another big beef I have is that the, the difference in vintages, you shouldn't do that. All boxes should be the same. I had some comments from subscribers saying that uh, some boxes had different vintages compared to what I was drinking. Like for example, Sophie from Goose Island. Uh, some people were drinking 2016 bottles. Now it's just a Saison that's been barrel aged and whatnot. Doesn't matter too much maybe, but I would still want some consistency in that regard. And some people even told me they think that I had the 2016 vintage of Lerbic Christmas Shake, which makes me wonder if anyone else, uh, if, if it's the case, you know, it, it kind of makes sense in terms of the flavors that I got. I was expecting a big hop bomb and I wasn't. And people said like their bottles were super turbid and hazy and juice bomby, but mine wasn't, or at least the, cause that's also a beer I think they release um, outside of this box. Uh, people who had newer vintages or the new freshly brewed batch said it was turbid and hazy. And, and it doesn't matter if it's turbid or hazy, they just look different than mine, that's my point. Uh, and that it was super juicy and fresh tasting and it paired great with the vanilla and lactose and all that. So a bit of consistency in that regard, but I also get it. I mean, if you have leftovers from last year, you want to get them used because they're hard to sell. It's a company, it's about making money. That's how most of these things work, you know? But all in all, I'd say it, it's been kind of a disappointment. It's been fun, but the disappointing features of the box hasn't uh, or has kind of outweighed the fun of it because so many like like uh, beers that like are so bad and that you give them like a 50 in this box you know that it really has to be a c kind of bad beer you know that's not something you want for in, in a christmas box where you want some good stuff especially like with the label you know Carl Grandin did the label as omnipoyo that should say something like the quality should be really high. So I'd say for next year, Sabio uh, Bia, up the quality, up the freshness, keep the same vintages of the beers, and then who cares if it's gonna be a bit more expensive. Then maybe have two boxes, one of the, a, a cheaper one, and then have like a premium one or something like that. But all in all, <clears throat> it's been a bit of a disappointment. This a bit of a disappointment. But it's still been fun, it's still, been a little fun ride at least down memory lane because there was a lot of stuff in here that I don't drink anymore or haven't drank in years at least and then revisiting was quite fun but um, all the critique all the ramblings aside it's still been great thanks still a ton to Savio Bia and Hopped for the box I'm not out to get you guys or anything I'm just stating what I think personally about the box and that's how I do the stuff on Master of Hoppets and always have so I hope you guys appreciate it and also that you guys watching appreciate it. So that did it for the beery Christmas. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you enjoyed it more than me. Maybe you enjoyed, enjoyed it less than me. Let me know what's your thoughts of the box uh, in, in in the comments below. Let me know. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for next year. We, I don't know what we're going to be doing. If we're going to be doing another Christmas calendar, if I should make one myself, I don't know. Or... Uh, yeah, I don't know, but tomorrow there will be a little bonus Christmas video of some Christmas beer I review every year that I can't leave out, even though I have a box of beer like this. So stay tuned for tomorrow, guys, the 25th, and uh, I want to say cheers, and as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm going to say cheers. See you guys in another beer review.